let's click on add component. Scroll down to new script and let's create a new script called movement. And as you can see here, it created our default methods like last time. For now, let's delete this start method right here. And inside of this update method in between the curly brackets, let's first retrieve our input. So we're going to make a new vector three, which is a 3D vector. Now, if you don't know what that is, that's okay. Uh, just follow along. So we're gonna make a vector three called input and we'll set it equal to new vector three. And this is going to take three parameters, an X, Y, and a Z. Now, so for our X, let's type input, the get axis, and we're gonna do two quotation marks and type horizontal. Now for our Y, let's type input, the get axis, vertical. And for our Z, let's do zero just for the time being. Then after this, let's type debug.log input. Save your script. Now you might remember from last script, this debug.log typed hello world in this console window right here. So what do you think this debug.log will put in the console here? If you don't know, let's test to find out. Go to your game window and press play. So right now if I press W, it prints that right here. Awesome. Now from this input, we actually want to move our player, obviously. So let's delete this. And let's type transform.translate. And then let's put input. So what this does is it will translate or move this cube by our input. And let's multiply this by 10 and then times time dot delta time. Now what this does is actually pretty simple. Now if you read this, you might notice that this update method is called once per frame. But the problem with this is that if someone has more FPS, because they have better hardware or something, they will get more frames per second. So what this does is it gets the time between last frame and this frame, for example, like 0.016 for 60 FPS. And what multiplying this and this together gives you is it makes sure that if you get more frames per second, you won't move faster. So just save this. As you can see, our cube falls. And if we press WASD, we can move around. Now, there's already a couple of problems with this. So let's fix a few of them. Firstly, we, you might notice that this cube is rotating when we move it. So let's freeze its rotation. Click on this rigid body component right here. Click on constraints and let's freeze all of the rotation. Awesome. Now the next thing you might notice is that when we press W and S, it's moving up and down instead of forward and backwards. And I don't know, that might be what you're going for, but ideally we want, we'd want it to move in the Z direction which is this way, instead of up and down. So to do this, instead of putting our input.getAxis in the Y direction, which is up and down right here, we wanted to move this object in the Z direction. So let's copy this, type zero in here, and let's paste it in the Z direction. Let's test. And now we can move our cube around. This is already looking pretty awesome. Uh, so let's keep going. 
I'm going to actually shift this camera up a little bit. So I'm going to use this tool right here and just drag it up and then rotate it down a little bit. Now you can see a little preview of what you're doing over here, which is just this window right here. Awesome. Now let's make this cube jump. So to do this, we are going to need to reference this component over here. So type public rigid body and we'll name it RB. And if you save this, under the script, we'll get a new parameter for this rigid body over here. So you can just drag it in. All right, let's make a jump. So let's type if input dot get button down, add two quotation marks, and let's type jump, add some curly brackets. Now in here, we're gonna reference our rigid body named RB. So let's type RB dot add force. And as you can see here, it takes in three parameters, an X, Y, and a Z. So we need to create a new vector three, similar to how we did here. So let's type vector three, jump input equals new vector three. And we need three parameters, as you can see. So for the X, we want zero. Um, for the Y, let's type 10. And then for the and then for the z, let's type zero. So in this add force function, we can just pass in the jump input. Now we can jump. This is very sweet. Now what if we want to make this camera actually follow the cube? So to do this, let's select our camera right here. And we'll drag it or parent it under this cube. Now what this does is it whenever we move the cube, it will move the camera with it as well. Now I'm just going to move the camera above the cube. And I mean, this is pretty sick. Let's do, let's make some basic parkour for this cube to do. So I'm going to create some more cubes for this cube to jump on top of and make a basic parkour course. So right click, create a cube. And over here, let's select this tab and this just gives me access to these handles for scale. You can also do this here, but I'll just use this. And let's just make some, let's just make a basic parkour course. Now suppose we want to make this have different colors because this looks fairly bland. So click on your project folder right here, select assets, right click, click create and create a material. Let's name this one red, change the albedo, which is basically color. Let's change this to red and we can drag this onto our player cube. Awesome. Now let's make a different color for these obstacles. So you can click Control D to duplicate it. And let's rename this to blue. And if we drag this onto all of these obstacles and then change the color, you can see it changes their color. So let's just make a nice blue color.
Now, awesome. Now, if you want to send this game to your friends, uh, family, grandma, what you can do is you click File, Build Settings. Uh, in this project folder, go to Scenes and drag in your sample scene, which is the one you're using right now, and click Build. Now you can select a folder. I'll just do it in my desktop. Click Save. Uh, excuse the carrots, uh, click on your desktop. It should show up here. Um, so yeah, let's, you get an exe file. Lovely. <laughs> and now we have your very own parkour game. Now, this is a pretty awesome start to game development. And if you actually want to take game development seriously and learn, I mean, it's a skill, like a skill takes time to learn. So you have to be willing to fail and you have to really enjoy the process. But I hope this sort of gave you a glimpse into what it's like to create games and maybe helped make the Unity game engine seem a little less daunting. If you'd like more tutorials similar to this, I'll be obviously making more, so stay tuned. Bye.